Hi, it's Rick again from the Game Creators and welcome to the fourth part of making a Tetris game uh, which I've called Rictris. But yeah, I've solved my biggest problem which was to do with the rotation and making sure that there was uh, enough space for the rotation to happen. The problem I had last time that, uh, at the bottom of the uh, game was actually related to something else. It wasn't nothing to do with rotation. It was when you press down arrow you go straight down to the bottom. Every now and again, because the timer was counting down, it also went down. So in the same part of that main loop, we were going down with the down arrow logic, but then also the timer was making the shape go down as well. So that was quite an easy one to fix, but it was a bit hard to find. So I've changed quite a bit because of what I've had to do. I'm going to go through those changes, but first let's just play the game. Let's see where we're up to. So, as usual, we've got the grid on the left showing us the debug information. We can rotate, press down, and the pieces go straight down, like so. I'm getting better at playing Tetris. <laughs> I was never very good at it. There we are, and then the lines go down there. Now, one thing, when you're near the edge, when you press rotate, we have to make sure there's enough space for you to do that, and that's part of the logic I've added recently. We get a long piece coming at some point. We can show that in, in a better way. Here we are. So we've got on here. We have to check we can go across that way. And the same for the right-hand side. Can we actually fit in there? Okay, so what's changed? Well, let's scroll down the, the code and look for the stars. Okay, I've had to build a, a new array called Grid 6x6, and this is used uh, to determine whether we can do the rotation or not. And I'm using globals. The reason we're using globals is because we're using a function now within the program, and some of these values I need to use within the function. If um, your variables and your strings are not set to global, then they can't be used within the function. Uh, there's good reasons for that, and we'll cover globals and local variables when I do a video about that specifically. But I've just had to set those to global. Uh, I've got score and bonus variables added. Then we come to the main loop, what's changed here. Um, so yeah, if we go sub remove lines, then score will equal the score plus any bonus. This routine here, okay, ignore the print and the sync. It's to do with this bit here. If timer equals 500, then reset timer, and then decrease move shape speed. So basically the game will speed up as the timer counts down and then it resets. And then we just make sure that the move shape speed never gets below 10 because otherwise it'd be too fast. Okay, I think that's it for the main.agc file. In grid.agc, we have some new routines. So I talked about the 6x6 six six grid. So the logic here, it's a bit complicated, but, and, it, and it sort of evolved as I sort of thought it through. So we take a 6x6 six six grid from where the shape, the current shape is, and we actually remove the shape from that grid. So we take a copy from the, the game grid, if you like, into this 6x6, six six, and then we get rid of the shape. So that's what that routine does. It just creates this grid in this particular moment in the game, six by six around the shape but removes the shape and then later you'll see that we call that routine to see if we can actually move around that six by six grid so this here's the function so this function is a routine called can shape rotate it can have two parameters sent to it well it needs two parameters sent the rotation and the offset so it comes in with say, let, let's say rotation is one, the offset is zero. So what it'll do, it will get the current shape based on the rotation. So let's say we had a long straight piece and we're rotating it so it's going to be horizontal. It will check to see if that new rotation can be fitted into grid six by six. And if it can't, then a zero will be returned, result equals zero. So we set result equals one, assuming we can, and if we can't, then we come out with a zero. So this will make sense in a moment. So that's a function, and the function returns result, okay? 
Now, input is where we're doing the calls to these new routines. Okay, so the first thing we do is when we press spacebar, remember, we're rotating the shape. First, we'll just store the current rotation because if we rotate and we can't rotate, we need to reset it back to how it was. Then we do our first call to the function, can shape rotate. So move shape rotation, the new value, comma zero, no offset. The user has pressed the spacebar. Can we now display that rotation within the game? If it returns zero, then no, we can't. So that's the first check. Then we check near the edge of the screen on the left, and then we check on the right of the screen to see if that fit in as well. It's quite complicated. It took me a while to work it out. It's even harder to re-explain. So trust me, it works. What else is there? Um, so. This routine, if you press the down arrow, okay, you want the piece to go straight down. So what we do is, we do a repeat until. So we increase the move shape Y position, the Y position of the shape. We go, so can we check below shape? So check if we can actually move down. Keep doing that until chain shape doesn't equal zero. If it equals something other than zero, then you must reach the bottom. Then make sure move count equals move shape speed. So reset the counter. This is where I had the bug. That's all I had to put in to, to fix that bug. Okay, so those are those routines. Another thing I changed was if you notice the grid, uh, it's now got 1111 down the second column and across the bottom and down here as well. And the reason we're doing that is because when we're shifting around, we don't want to come out of bounds. So this check to see if we're on the edge or not, like so, we don't want to... Uh, we don't want to go out of bounds in the array. So I made the array a bit bigger, uh, an area that you wouldn't see in the game. So yeah, that's really the game working. Uh, as you can see, I'm playing it. It's doing what it should do. I probably need a bit of testing now, make sure there's no bugs or anything else in there. But I'm really close to having it completed now. Pretty pleased with it. I didn't realize how much work was going to be involved um, but hopefully it's a useful example that you can learn from even if you just take a few ideas from it uh, especially using data to represent things and manipulate our manipulation of data uh, I still want to do some more things to it so there'll be another video soon uh, title page and other things let's have a look at the list so uh, yeah I've done that that can be deleted. Uh, a grace period, so when the shape is coming down, give you uh, about half a second to be able to move left and right before it's actually settled. Um, speed up the game as it plays. I think I've done that. Check for end of game. So yeah, at the moment, if uh, we just oh, monkey, we just get it to the top, you can see it goes all crazy. So we need to do a final check and end the game. Uh, I'd like to add some sound and music, uh, a title page, start and end a game, and maybe some particles. That's all quite easy compared to what I've just done over the last two videos. So hopefully by the end of this week it should be complete and I can move on and do some different tutorials. Please subscribe. Um, I've nearly got 200 subscribers. By, by the time I publish this, hopefully I have got 200. And uh, keep asking questions. And thanks for watching. Bye.